Hello, so today we're doing some azeotropic distillation of hydrochloric acid. Um, I have here my usual um, hardware store hydrochloric acid, which is 32% hydrochloric acid. It's pretty standard, most people can find it in the world. Um, now, a thing that seems to be pretty universal, all brands of hydrochloric acid in most parts of the world, is that they have a iron contamination. Um, this is obviously, it's created as some sort of byproduct of um, of some industry, I assume, you know, obviously one with iron in it, you know, scrap metal or something like that. So, um, it's not huge. Um, like, it doesn't really matter. I, you know, I've never, never thought it mattered that much. Um, but it is, it is annoying um, because it's always yellow, and you know, it's always sort of there. Hydrogen chloride and water have a 20.2% uh, azeotrope. Um, and that boils over at about 109 degrees. So that's what we'll be doing. So this is 32%. So I'll be adding some water to the um, hydrochloric, um, and I'll I'll dilute it to it is about. Um, assuming this is still 32%, I'll dilute it to about 25%, and then we'll distill over the 20%. Um, that gives us quite a bit of room for error, in case this is is actually not 32%. It's reasonably old now, and um, it does fume off, so we'd lose some percentage there. Um, and uh, wait, no, I don't think that's that's not how azeotropes work. But anyway, um, yeah, it might have lost some percentage. So, so um, yeah, we would be stilling over uh, um, some pure but lower concentration hydrochloric acid. So I'll add some water, put it in there, and finish this setup. Now I have an addition funnel here, so I can continually add some more of the semi-diluted hydrochloric as this goes on into the two-net flask and can distill over. Uh, you might be asking, well why don't you just use a big flask at the bottom there? Well, because my one and only one, I smashed it the other day. Well, I mean, it is tempting, you think, oh I can still use this, it holds water, but you really shouldn't. So. Waiting on another shipment from China of the cheap flasks. Um, I do get my glassware from China. Um, it is cheap, but I haven't found it to be cheap and nasty. It's pretty good. Um, and the only time I, I seriously, I, I went to great lengths to break that by, on accident. Um, it was superheated from um, like dry distilling some orange and added some water and that shattered it. But that would have shattered most things anyway. Um, and I broke this. Um, you'll see that soon when the water's dripping through. It still works, but it's broken. That's only because I dropped it, and I broke another flask, and I also broke that on concrete. So, um, you know, and that and those three things would break any sort of level of glassware, regardless of the cheap or or um, the most expensive Pyrex. So, you might as well just get. I might as I might as well get the cheap stuff because you know, I can't really afford the expensive stuff, and um, it works for me just fine. Got the first few. Oh, this is terrible at focusing. Oh, we got the first few drops of hydrochloric acid coming over now. Um, yeah, it's a bit, a um, bit low on the temperature scale, so we're going to discard these drops a little bit. Um, you may have also noticed the um, very odd setting. Um, this is because hydrochloric acid fumes are basically responsible for everything wrong with the world. Um, you know, they really cause things to rust, so I've tried to move away from, I usually do outside distillation, sort of just there in front of the lab, that's my lab there. There used to be a tree there, but we chopped it down because it was going to fall on my lab. That would have been a bad day. Um, usually there are things there, but I've moved them over here. Just running the power cord from the house. Still actually not that far away from the house, but, you know, we should be far away enough that it's fine. Like, But if I did this inside, in the lab, that would be very bad. But hopefully all these roses protect me. Um, they can absorb the fumes for me as opposed to the metal in my lab, so that's alright. So I've started collecting. Um, we're at, oh, I don't know, a constant boiling temperature of about 96. So I don't know what's with that. Um, but, you know, I've started collecting um, because, well, I've got to go to work today. 
and it's also looking like it might actually just start pouring with rain. It might actually just start pouring with rain. It might actually just start pouring with rain. I don't really want my heater hot plate stirrer right out here. Spent far too much money on that thing to leave it out in the rain. So, um, yeah, and then it's a loser to the band this whole experiment. I'll still get some pure hydrochloric acid just with a uh, um, not 100% set concentration. Um, but that doesn't really matter. I, know I don't really do that much precise chemistry um, in that I really need an exact um, hydrochloric thing. And if that was the case, I'd need a titrate anyway. So um, this is just going to be some pure hydrochloric acid with an unknown concentration. And that's okay. Alright, you can kind of see what's wrong with my distillation adapter. Alright, it's really going to rain in a second. Um, you can see this this little bit uh, here is snapped off. So the water, uh, the, the acid is pooling there and it will occasionally run over into the, into the flask. But, um, yes, it does work, but you do get a bit of pooling there, which is a bit annoying. Mm. It doesn't get a nice drip rate because then it just runs down the side of the flask and you don't get this nice drip rate which you can see and film and get nice shots of so but whatever my fault for dropping it really so yes it's now pouring with rain uh, well, it's just spitting at the moment, and I'll give it another three minutes, and it will be pouring with rain. Cool. Um, great experiment, Tom. I'm really glad you sat up outside in uh, this weather. Actually, it was fine when I started, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, fuck you, nature, anyway. Um, I'm going to uh, turn this off. Hmm, I wonder if rain hitting hot glassware is enough to crack it by a thermal shock. Mm, um, how much... Hydrochloric acid we have. Whoa, hardly any. That's great. Um, maybe that might be enough for um, focus. Might be enough for what I want to do with it. Um, and I guess I'll do this again later when I don't have to stand out here in the freezing cold. Oh, I mean it's like 27 degrees still, but you know, um, it's still pouring rain. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Um, I can't be bothered filming anymore because I'm already wet. So yeah, um, cool. This was azeotropic distillation of hydrochloric acid. Hope you liked it. Support me on Patreon. <laughs>